There is now a non-soldering solution to repair Face ID where the TrueDepth camera has failed. This is for a dot projector issue and we're gonna use today the AY A108 programmer. This allows you to read the original sensor, write it onto a special tag on flex and this allows you to basically bypass the issue that is in the sensor. So we're gonna go through that full process. Make sure you pay attention to every single step. I'd recommend watching the video at least once and then just follow along with the process because you do wanna make sure you follow every single step, understand what it takes to do this repair. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. So here's the error that you would see. It is the problem with the TrueDepth camera. And if, you're, if you don't know, the TrueDepth camera is actually this sensor up here. It is a little glass one, it's underneath it. So that's the one that fails. It is not the ear speaker flex, it is not the IR cam. So make sure you understand this is the sensor we're trying to fix. And this is the error you'll see. If you have any other error, then it's probably not, this is not the video for you. You would have to find the solution for the specific issue you're having. Now this is the programmer that we're gonna use, the A108 programmer. Inside you'll find a power cable. Now, this they sent it to me with the iPhone 11 tag on flex, iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max, 10s, 10R, 10s Max, and iPhone 10. So when you buy this, you actually have to make sure you buy the programmer and the tag on flexes you need for the specific repair you're doing. So keep that in mind. And this is the actual programmer board. So this is where you plug in the actual sensor and the tag on flexes. And then this is the actual programmer itself. So this is actually gonna be my first time doing it, but it should be pretty easy and straightforward. So let's go through that process. So let's pop this out. Uh, this is the main unit. And then this is the board that you plug in. All right, so it goes like that. This cable is USB-C, which I already have one here on my computer. All right, so this is everything. The power cable, tag on flexes, the programmer, and the module here for the to plug in stuff. Up here, you see the USB-C plug, and then this is the power plug. So now let's go ahead and give this a try. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this into the computer using a USB-C cable. And now we're gonna head over to the computer and go to aytool.cn. And then you wanna click this third button here. It's in Chinese, but using a translator, this is the download option. Your browser might have a built-in uh, translation, but the one you want is this last one. Uh, click download and install it. Once you download and install that, you'll get this program here. Now by default, it is in Chinese, so make sure you click this little world button. And then here on the left, the little person, click on that and create an account. One thing about creating an account is it does ask for an address, but you can just leave all that blank. Just select on the corner where it says, uh, pick an email instead of a phone number, fill that in, create a password. The section that it says address is all in Chinese, so I just left it blank. Then I requested the verification code, which then I pasted there, and then I created the account instantly, and it was, it was real simple. So just use your common sense to create the account. Now this is the actual app. Let's go to repair and there you go. So one of the first things you wanna do that I've been seeing a lot of people talk about is that you need to upgrade the device. That's this little button here. You wanna click upgrade and this will update the firmware of the unit. This is the one you would plug into the computer. So right now it's actually updating. So let that process and then we'll be back. So there you go, it's back online. And then on the PC, you could also see it's back online. All right, so one of the things we gotta do here is actually, let's get the dot projector out. And what we're gonna do for this model, this is 11 Pro Max. I like this model because it doesn't require you to remove the battery to get the sensor out. So like I said, this is a technical process. So if you're watching this, I'm assuming you already know how to disassemble phones and everything. Don't just try this. If you've never opened the phone before and aren't familiar with disassembling and all that. So what we wanna do is find the flex that is the dot projector. So the dot projector is the little glass one. So 
visually find it and you can see this one on this device is this flex now depending on whatever device you're working on it might be a different flex so keep that in mind and i'm gonna plug this into the board here uh, that's labeled 11 pro so i have an 11 pro max 11 pro is the same thing so i have that plugged in like that all the other cables just stay hanging and then we come here and let's test all right so this is the failure that we can fix. If you have this one where it says IC fuse and then abnormal, this is where we can go through this process and repair it. If you have uh, I2C error or some other error, then this is not the solution. It requires probably soldering or something. All right, so now I'm actually gonna plug in the phone on a separate cable to the computer. And while that's booting up, let's get the cable, the tag on flex out as well. This is the for 11, Pro 11 Pro Max is the exact same cable and it comes in a little blister package type of thing. I'll put that off to the side. All right, so it's booted up. I'm going to make sure you trust it so the computer recognizes it. So here on the tool, if you click on device, you can see it reads the device. And then here you can see it detected the phone. So let's do cloud backup. This has backed up the data from the sensor to the cloud, to your account. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the power. I'm gonna click activate. Remaining activations to continue, yes. So I don't know exactly what is happening, but it has now done something. So now we're gonna write on the tag on flex. Basically you get the little skinny part sticking out. Well, there's only one way to plug this in. And you plug it into 11 Pro again, detected, and then we wanna click cloud burn, click okay. Now this part concerns me. I actually recorded this and the video messed up, so I'm redoing it. So that's why I now have nine, but I started off with 10. Now the question is, is there gonna have to be credits in the future to keep doing these? I don't know, I'll have to ask. I'll post it down below in the video description or in the comments once I find out. But for now, let's just go ahead with it and click yes. And it's complete. So now we wanna unplug this tag on flex. We're gonna plug the tag on flex to the dot projector like this. So like it's kind of like a little extension and then plug it in to there. And now we're gonna test. Look at that, all normal. So this is what you should expect. This is what you wanna see. So after you do all the steps, you see all normal with the tag on flex attached to the dot projector. So let's take a look under the microscope to see what that looks like. So this is how you would plug it in. Now to put this into the housing, obviously this doesn't match the original length, right? We now extend it. So there's like a little puzzle on how to do this. I just happen to find here on the software, if you go to tutorial and then the, it's all in Chinese, so it's kind of hard to read, but the third list, click the little arrow. This has kind of how to fold each model. So 11 Pro, Pro Max. You watch the little video and they essentially tell you how to do it. Uh, right, so here, let me show you what they did here. So they want you to fold this part backwards like this. Right, so like that. And now it's back to the original length. Now the tricky part is to fit this into the housing because this now goes like that. All right, so you see that? By the way, I do recommend you work with gloves because then you can get fingerprints all over everything. All right, so essentially like that. So you fold the connector backwards, you plug this in and then you fold this forward. So I hope that makes sense. If not, watch that video in 
the program. So let's try this out. I'll do it under the microscope so we could all see a little better. I don't know if we have to remove the battery, possibly. So if you are a non-soldering technician, uh, I recommend picking up a microscope for this type of jobs because it's gonna be hard to do all this without one. But I guess it's not impossible. All right, so this is where I guess tricky. You gotta fit this all in here. Like he's popping out. All right, that's plugged in. This gets wedged in there, and there you go. So this is what essentially it'll look like. It's pressing up against the battery, but it should stay in place and out of the way. So now let's go ahead and test this out, and make sure Face ID works. All right, so now the phone is booted back up. If we go to Face ID, the message is gone, and now we're able to set up Face ID. So for these tests, I do like to snap the screen into the housing because that gives you a true test of everything working. Because sometimes out of the housing, it'll work, but once you snap in the screen, it doesn't. So let's go ahead and try that out. Yeah, there it goes. My face is there. And it's, yeah, doing higher, lower issue. And this is why I was saying you got to try it with the screen. All right, so there's a misalignment issue, of course. So let me, let's open this up and check out what's going on. All right, screen is off. Now this is one of the downsides to dot projector repairs is if there's a alignment issue, just it's such a pain to get face ID to work. All right, so now let's try without the screen. All right, so still not working. So let me inspect a little further and see what's going on. All right, with a little bit of troubleshooting, I think I figured it out. Um, one is I had to make sure the flex was fully seated, and then I also made sure this portion is pushed into the, you know, where it belongs. So I think a combination of those two possibly fixed it, because now I'm gonna snap the screen back in. Well, at least it was working before I snapped the screen. Let's try it again. There it goes. It's detecting my face. Continue. One more time. Now the important thing is you want to test also unlocking the screen. So I'm gonna set a pin code. All right, so we're gonna test. Yeah, look at that right away. So if you look here at the top, there's a little lock button. As soon as I look, it unlocks. Yeah, it's working. So if you want to buy this, you're going to want to go to DIYFixTool.com. I will link it down below. And you want to get the A108 box, which is the standard set. This comes with the main units and the Face ID modules. I guess it comes with a battery module as well, the power and uh, yeah, basically the power cable and the USB-C cable. Now, just that by itself is $30, which is amazing. I was actually expecting it to be at least 100, if not more, but it's only $30 just for the programmer. And then you're gonna want the flexes, which let's say you wanna get the seven piece that has every single model, supported model, then that's $50. If you want, let's see, how much is an individual flex? So the one I did just now, is seven dollars so if you're doing this as a repair shop imagine 
spend $30 for a programmer, $7 for the flex. You now can fix face ID for basically starting cost of $37. And then from there on, just the cost of the flex, which is, you know, it's about $7 each. I'm sure prices will go down into the future as well. The iPhone 10 is only $5. So you can even buy a full set here for $120. So this is pretty cool. Now they do also have the battery uh, thing as well, which let me know down below in the comments if you want me to make a video about battery notification issues. If you want to know how to do the spot welding and do the tag on flex and all that. I've done one battery so far and it was so simple. I was like, why haven't I done this before? So let me know down below in the comments if you guys want to see that. But for now, I will link this tool down below and you know, this is from phone fix in China. So also you got to factor in cost of shipping. So it's about $30 expedited shipping, which is usually like DHL or FedEx, which to me here in Vegas, it gets here in about three days once they ship because it's just super fast. So definitely I always pay for the fast shipping because why not? I'm going to use it to make more money and you know, I am running a business and time is money. So definitely worth it. So check it out. They also have other cool tools. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know, I've covered a lot of the tools they sell there and they also have all the other brands as well. So after watching this video, you're thinking I would do it myself, but I don't have the tools where well, you're in luck. We do offer mail-in service for face ID repairs, boot looping, iPad charging ports, iPhone, no power, water damage data recovery. So reach out to me through my website, which I will link down below. I will also link to where to buy this programmer, my locals community, my Facebook group. And if you had an iPhone 13 pro max, this solution does not work for you, but I do have a video on that repair. So I will post that right here. And I do appreciate all you guys who stuck around here to the end. I'll see you guys in the next one.